hello 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 welcome to our next chapter of your gst that is your refund comparatively important chapter so let's start i have summarized in maybe about two to three pages okay so first of all refund is whenever whenever you have some amount either in your electronic credit ledger or in your cash ledger whenever, whenever you have some extra amount in it and you want the you want that amount back in your bank account that is when you apply for a refund so situations leading to a refund situations when there might be excess money in your credit ledger so first is any exports or supply to SEZ developer or unit on payment of IGST because in this what happens there is no output tax liability of course when you are supplying to SEZ there will be no GST there will be no GST charges on your invoices however and these are zero rated since these are I hope all of you remember what zero rated supplies are what is the difference between zero rated and exempt? I've already covered that in the video. Okay, so since these are zero rated, your output tax liability is nothing but you are paying tax on your inputs and you get your ITC for your input. Therefore, you will have some excess amount in your ledger. So any export or supply to achieve their developer or unit on payment of IGST. Next. Refund of unutilized ITC on supply to SEZ developer unit without payment of IGST or in case of your inverted duty structure. Next, tax paid on supply of goods regarded as deemed transport. What, whatever tax you have paid on goods which are regarded as deemed transport, of course, you will get a refund for that. Any balance in electronic cash ledger after payment of tax interest penalty fee, etc. For example, you transferred, you transferred more amount than what was required. So you have still some balance left. So of course, you can claim a refund. Tax paid on a supply which is not provided, that is tax paid on advance payment. So in this case, what happened? You paid tax, you paid tax on a supply which actually was not provided at all. That means the supply was never provided because tax paid on advance payment because you had already paid the tax since you received the advance amount. Next, tax wrongly collected and paid to government. So you thought that it was IGST, but it was actually CGST and SGST or for whatever confusion. So you have to, you actually have to pay CGST, SGST. So you will claim a refund of this IGST. IGST paid by tourists leaving on uh, leaving India on supply of goods taken out of India by him. So any IGST paid by the tourist him, this is actually covered. This is actually treated as an export. Therefore, this tax that has been paid by the tourist, it will be refunded to him. As consequence of a judgment, decree, order or direction of your AAAT or your court. So if, if due to any order or judgment, any tax that you have paid is now being reversed, so that will be refunded to you. Any purchases made by UN bodies or embassies also, this will also be refunded because this is treated as an export. Next, refund to retail outlets, refund to retail outlets in departure area of an international airport. If you remember, at those terminals, there are some shops at your uh, airport, there are some shops inside. So any refund to retail outlets in departure area of an international airport beyond immigration counter making tax free supply to outgoing international tourists therefore this is considered an export because because you are making tax free supply to who, who are you making supply to you are making supply to people going outside of india so therefore this will be treated as an export and your gst shall be reversed on this so therefore they get a refund next advance tax deposited by your ctp or nrtp so you know that for ctp and nrtp to get to get their registration certificate, they have to deposit some amount of tax. So any advance tax deposited, which is not utilized, which is not utilized at the end of the registration, they can claim a refund for this amount. So these are the situations that lead to your refund. Now next is the, what is the time limit? What is the time limit within which I can claim this refund? So you can claim refund two years. You can claim refund two years from the relevant date. So from the relevant date, you can file application within two years. This is the last date to file for refund. So that is two years. Now you'll ask me what is relevant date. So in different cases, there are different relevant dates. Now what you have to understand that this time limit, this time limit of two years, it is only, only for electronic credit ledger. This time limit is only for electronic credit ledger, not for electronic 
कैश लेते देर इज नो टाइम लिमिट फॉर एक्सेस बैलेंस इन कैश लेते बिकॉज कैश बैलेंस इज योर मनी ओनली कैश लेते इज योर मनी दैट यू पुट फ्रॉम योर बैंक इट इज नॉट एनी आई पी सी दैट यूर क्लेमिंग सो देर इज नो लिमिट ऑन कैश लेते बट इट इज ओनली ऑन योर क्रेडिट लेते तो फर्स्ट केस इज वेन गुड्स आर एक्सपोर्टेड आउटसाइड इंडिया वेन गुड्स आर एक्सपोर्टेड आउटसाइड इंडिया वेर रिफंड इज अवेलेबल ऑन गुड्स एंड इनपुट्स एंड गुड्स आर एक्सपोर्टेड बाय सो वेन गुड्स एक्सपोर्टेड आउटसाइड इंडिया and refund is available on the imports and if the goods are exported by sea or air that is if either by ship either by vessel or by flight or aircraft so in such a case your relevant date that is the date from when we will calculate two years that is date when the ship or aircraft leaves india it is that particular date when the ship or aircraft actually leaves india that will be your relevant date two years from that date you can claim for refund next if it leaves by land if it leaves by land date when such goods pass the frontier when the goods pass the frontier that is your relevant date so in case of ship or vessel in case ship vessel or aircraft it is when the ship vessel or aircraft actually leaves india in case of land it is when the goods pass the frontier that is when they pass the borders and next is your post so date of dispatch of goods by the post office that is when the post office dispatches the goods when the post office dispatches the goods for example you you send some goods by post from india to nepal so you gave it to the post office now the date the post office the date the post office dispatches the goods that will be the relevant date okay next services exported outside india were refund available on services and inputs and the supply or service has been completed prior to receiving payment so if your if your supply or service has already ended and then you receive the payment later So it will be the date of receipt of payment in your foreign currency or INR, whichever. So it is whichever date, whenever you receive the payment. So supply or service is completed prior to receiving payment. So since you since you completed the service first and you are receiving the payment later, so your relevant date will start from the date when your payment has been received. However, 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 if payment for service received in advance prior to issue of invoice. If if you first receive the payment and later you are issuing the invoice, that means that means you are receiving an advance payment. In such a case, your relevant date will be date when the invoice has been issued. It it is the date of issue of invoice. Okay. So what you have to understand first, we did goods when goods are being outside India. So goods may be studied three cases. First, we study that if it is being sent by either. Uh, either by air or water, so it is the date when the vessel or the aircraft actually leaves India. Then second we did if it is being done by land, so it is when the goods actually pass the frontier. Then third we did by post. So post is when the department and the postal department actually dispatches the goods. This was your first case. Now second case we are doing in case of services. In case of services we made two bifurcation. First bifurcation is if you first. provided the service and later you are receiving the payment so if you first provided the service and later receiving the payment your relevant date your relevant date will be when the receipt of payment when you actually receive the payment that will be your relevant date however 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 your second case is when you receive the payment before issuing invoice so if you receive the payment before issuing the invoice your relevant date will be when the invoice is issued two years from that date okay next supply of goods regarded as deemed exports so if these goods are regarded as deemed exports in such a case date on which return relating to such deemed exports so date when such return relating to such deemed export is furnished by the supplier so whenever whenever you are whenever you file the return whenever you file the return for such deemed export that is your relevant date tax refundable as a consequence of judgment decree or order so if, if you see if you see these are the same condition that we had studied over here uh where is this hmm. so this one we are doing as a consequence of judgment decree order of direction okay so if tax refundable as a consequence of judgment decree or order so it is the date of communication of such judgment decree or order next if refund of unutilized itc on account of inverted duty structure so if due to inverted duty structure you are refunding the unutilized itc so due date for furnishing of return under section 39 for period in which such claim for refund arises so whatever is the due date whatever is the due date for furnishing of furnishing of your return that is the period in which such claim for refund arises 
Next, where tax is paid on provisional basis. If the tax has been paid on provisional basis, in such a case, for example, you have paid tax or tax at a rate of 18% because you were not aware. But now you get to know that boss, I actually only had to pay on 5%. So you will claim refund. So it is date of adjustment of tax after final assessment. So after your final assessment has been done, whenever the tax has been adjusted, that is your relevant date. From that, from that date, it is two years. Next, in case of a person other than a supplier. So if it is other than a supplier, it is a date of receipt of goods or services by such person and any other case it will be your date of payment of tax so for all other for all other miscellaneous cases it will be your date of payment of tax now next is your application for refund claim application for refund claim that is how will you apply for a refund so first of all your application shall be formed in gst rfd 01 now i'll tell you how do they name these forms gst of course it is a gst refund RFD stands for refund and 01 that is your form number. So GST RFD 01 is in what you will make the application. Next, application not needed for refund on export of goods since shipping bill will be treated as refund claim because 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 whenever you are exporting goods, whenever you are exporting goods, the shipping bill, the shipping bill, the shipping bill itself will be treated as a claim for refund. So therefore, you might you need not fill the application form. Any balance in cash ledger. So if, if you have any balance in cash ledger, make claim, make claim through returns furnished in G in form GSTR 3, 4 or 7. So for different people, it is different forms, which is now nothing but GST RFD 01A. So this was GST RFD 01. This is GST RFD 01A. Next is your deemed export. So in case of application, in case of a uh, refund for deemed exports either the recipient or the supplier that is either of the parties in case of deemed exports either of the parties can claim refund so that means for example if the if the recipient if the recipient of services is already paying tax so now your supplier will not claim any refund of itc correct the recipient will be the person who will claim so therefore either recipient or supplier allowed to file application for refund remember in deemed exports any of the two person can apply for refund Supplier, supplier can only claim refund if recipient does not avail ITC on such supplies. Supplier will only be allowed if your recipient does not claim ITC. Because if the recipient claims ITC, then benefit will be given to both of them. So only benefit can be given to one of them. Next, SEZ unit or developer. So it is filed by supplier after such, after such goods and services have been admitted for the authorized operation. That means just being a SEZ unit developer is not enough. It will only be allowed once the goods and services that you purchase. They've actually, they've actually been used for the authorized operation. Authorized operations are the purpose for which the GST department gives the refund. Next is your CTP or NRTP. CTP, NRTP, when they have excess balance, when they have excess balance left advanced tax. So advanced tax refund only if all returns. So what you have to remember is they have to file all returns. All returns has had been filed in respect of entire period when registration remained in force. So for the entire period of registration, all your returns should have been filed to be claimed in the last return after adjusting the tax payable. So whatever, whatever amount, whatever excess advance tax they have, this will be adjusted after they file the last return. Now there should be your application, these applications that we studied plus any documentary evidence to establish that refund is due to the applicant and that there is no unjust enrichment. What do you mean by unjust enrichment is that is you are not claiming, you are not, you are not making a profit by getting this refund. You are only, this is only a reimbursement of ITC that is actually eligible to you. You are not making any profit out of this. So, Declaration is required where refund claim. So you will. So what are the documents that are required? Uh, when your refund claim is either equal to or less than two lakhs, a declaration is required. However, where a refund claim is more than two lakhs, so when a refund claim is more than two lakhs, you need a certificate by a chartered or post accountant wherever your refund claim is more than two lakhs. So if it is less than two lakhs, you only need a declaration where it is where it is equal to or less than 2 lakhs you only need a declaration where it is more than 2 lakhs you need a certificate and no declaration and certificate required no declaration or certificate required if refund of 
फर्स्ट केस इज टैक्स पेड ऑन एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज और इनपुट्स यूज इन मेकिंग सच एक्सपोर्ट्स इफ द टैक्स हैज बीन पेड फॉर एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज और इनपुट्स यूज इन मेकिंग सच एक्सपोर्ट्स अनयूटिलाइज्ड आईटीसी इन केस ऑफ जीरो रेटेड सप्लाइज विदाउट पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्स सो इन दिस केस नाइदर इज रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज़ यू आर नॉट पेइंग एनी टैक्स टैक्स पेड ऑन अ सप्लाई ऑन व्हिच इज नॉट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर एग्जांपल दैट इज योर एडवांस पेमेंट नेक्स्ट tax paid to the wrong government where it was a confusion of igst cgst we have already covered this case and next is refund of excess balance in electronic cash ledger of course you do not need any evidence for any excess balance that you have in your electronic cash ledger it is your money only you transfer through the bank account so there are no no additional documents required for this 90% of total refund claim to be paid 90% remember this percentage 90% of total refund claim to be paid within 7 days where refund is on account of zero rated supplies i hope you remember what is zero rated supplies is first is your export and second is supply to sez so these two are your zero rated supplies in these cases there is no output tax liability but you get your itc on your inward supplies provided the person has not evaded tax greater than 2.5 crores in the last 5 years only then and then 90% of the tax will be paid within 7 days on account of zero rated supplies so if your proper officer if your po has the opinion that the refund shall be rejected if he feel that the application shall be rejected he shall give a notice to applicant to reply within 15 days and the reply and reason of being heard and then they will pass the order so your applicant shall be given a re- uh, reasonable opportunity of being heard that is whatever reason he provides that why i am rejecting your application Applica- applicant should also be given a reasonable opportunity of being heard and then finally the order will be passed okay so your your refund shall be credited to whom so there are certain certain cases under which refund will be credited to the applicant that is refund will be granted to the applicant or second is it will be transferred to the consumer welfare fund so when tax tax paid on export of goods and services or on input of such goods and services to the applicant unutilized itc in case of zero rated supplies made without payment of tax or any accumulated itc any accumulated itc on account of inverted duty structure next tax paid on supply which is not provided that is your advance payment tax paid to wrong government that is your cgst igst confusion that we have already spoken about tax paid by applicant whose incidence has not been passed to another person that means that means that even though you paid this tax you have not passed on this now gst this is a completely indirect tax that is you do not bear it you pass it on to another person so if any tax you have paid and you have not passed it on to another person in all these cases in all these cases if refund is applicable it will be given it will be granted to the applicant itself next is your consumer welfare fund so all other cases all other cases where incidence of tax has been passed on that is where you have passed on the incidence of tax to the customer or to another person in such a case if you give the refund to the applicant himself if you give the refund to him since he has already passed on the enriched since he has already passed on the incidence of tax that means he is already he is already received the benefit of it if you give him refund now that will be your unjust enrichment so to prevent unjust enrichment the same shall be credited to the consumer welfare fund okay great next is your refund of unutilized itc so that is how do you calculate so itc accumulates when tax paid on inputs is greater than the output tax liability that means you have your output tax liability say for example is only uh, 18% so for for example for anything you anything you purchase anything your uh, anything that you sell you you sell it at 100 plus 18 that is 118% but if your inputs if your inputs are if your inputs are taxed at say for example 28% so in such a case your itc will always be more than your output tax liability so itc accumulates when your tax paid on inputs is greater than your output tax liability therefore refund refund allowed only in case of it will only be allowed in case of zero rated supplies without payment of tax that is supplied to sez unit developer under bond or your lut that is your letter of undertaking okay 
तो हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट योर रिफंड अमाउंट दैट इज जीरो रेटेड गुड्स एंड सप्लाई टर्न ओवर वॉट एवर इज द पोर्शन ऑफ योर टर्न ओवर दैट इज जीरो रेटेड डिवाइडेड बाय योर एडजस्टेड टोटल टर्न ओवर ओके डिवाइडेड बाय योर एडजस्टेड टोटल टर्न ओवर इन टू योर नेट आई टी सो सो बेसिकली यूर कैलकुलेटिंग रेशो दैट वॉट पर्सन वॉट पोर्शन ऑफ योर टोटल टर्न ओवर इज योर टर्न ओवर विद रिगार्ड टू योर गुड्स विद रिगार्ड टू गुड्स एंड सप्लाईज विच आर जीरो रेटेड that you will multiply by your net itc so you are calculating a portion you are calculating a proportion of how much of your net itc is actually zero rated supplies without payment of tax so that amount will be refunded to you so zero rated zero rated goods and zero rated goods and services turnover upon your adjusted turnover you get a ratio that it is 1/3 1/4 1/5 so how much how much of my total turnover is my zero rated goods and supplies goods and services turnover that you will multiply with your net itc and second is your inverted duty structure inverted duty structure when rate of tax of inputs is greater than your output that means the rate of tax that you are paying on your input that is more than the rate of tax that is charged on your output or also merchant exporters this we have already covered merchant exporters who pay at 0.1% this we have already done in the chapter import and export so in this case it is the inverted rate inverted rate goods and services turnover imported rate inverted rate goods and services turnover that means same we are doing what proportion what proportion of my total turnover belongs to my inverted rate goods and services that multiplied by your net itc now what you have to remember in mind over here you also have to subtract you will also have to subtract tax payable on such inverted rated supply of goods and services therefore the refund amount that you get you have to subtract you have from that you have to subtract the tax payable on such inverted rate supply because there is some still some tax payable correct over here it was zero rated that means no tax was payable so therefore there is nothing to subtract over here but under inverted duty structure there is still some portion that you have to pay so you have to subtract tax payable on such inverted rated supply of goods and services okay now your zero rated your zero rated turnover is your zero rate is zero rated supply made in period that is how much are how much ever zero rated supply you have made in the period or or 1.5 times the value of like goods that domestically supplied okay so either it is whatever you have made in the period or 1.5 times the value of the same good similar good like goods which you are domestically supplied your adjusted total turnover excludes value of exempt supply your your adjusted adjusted total turnover what we are taking in the base over here over here we've taken adjusted total turnover adjusted total turnover okay so adjusted turn, total turnover excludes value of exempt supply so your denominator becomes smaller okay example supplier is manufacturing only one type of good and it is sold both domestic and overseas that is it is both supplied within india and outside india also net admissible itc is equal to rupees 270 so your outward supply your outward supply is both local and export your value is 200 rupees and 350 rupees per unit that is your selling price number of units is 55 so therefore your tot your turnover your turnover within india becomes 1000 and turnover outside india becomes 1750 so turnover for formula turnover for formula will be 1000 okay your local domestic will be 1000 however your export your export will be 1.5 times your 1.5 times what you have domestically produced so domestically you have made 1000 correct so 1.5 times of domestic will be 1500 since you have to compare 1750 and 1.5 times so therefore this will be 1500 and your total turnover your total turnover will come to 2500 great so your refund is 1500 refund will be 1500 that is how much you have exported upon your adjusted turnover that is 2500 into your net itc available that is 270 and you will get a refund of 162 rupees so please make sure you solve questions on this so you get a better understanding we will not be able to cover more in depth in this revision video so i have just put a small example next refund of itc not allowed so in some cases refund of itc will not be allowed so if goods exported if goods exported outside of india so oi stands for outside in india 
so uh, sometimes i have to check my own shortcut so if both exported outside of india are subject to export duty refund of itc will not be available and if supplier if supplier of goods and services avails drawback in respect of cgst or claims refund of igst paid on such cases if the supplier does it then refund of itc will not be allowed next is your minimum refund claim so your refund refund shall be paid paid only if claim is greater than 1000 under each tax head separately this should be more than 1000 under each tax head and interest on refund that means if you made the application and within a particular time limit if they have not given you the refund back in such a case they will also have to pay you interest so if it is consequent to order passed by pu under section 545 in such a case in such a case interest will be charged at 6% per annum 6% per annum from when it is from expiry of 60 days from application date this means they are given a period of 60 days to give you the amount if they pay on the 61st day will the interest be for entire 61 days or will it be only for one day this is you have to find out put your answers in the comment section what i'm saying that of course your interest will be payable only after 60 days but if they make payment on the 61st days you think and tell me whether interest will be calculated for one day or whether it will be calculated for 61 days next consequent to order passed in an appeal so if it is if it is due to an order passed in an appeal 9% per annum after expiry of 60 days from application date so what you have to remember is it is 60 days in both the cases just the difference is over here it is 6% and over here it is 9% okay and coming to our last part of the chapter that is refund to un bodies embassies or etc so time limit to claim refund is 2 years time limit to claim refund remember our relevant date is till 2 years so time limit time limit to claim refund is 2 years from the last day from the last day of the quarter in which the supply was received last day it is 2 years from the last day of the quarter in which the supply was received and your canteen stores department that is your csd so canteen stores department under ministry of defense can claim refund of 50% of gst paid by it on all inward supplies all inward supplies they will get a 50% uh, refund of gst and last part of the chapter is refund refund to retail outlets in departure area of international airport we, we studied this that ones which are in the departure these they are making supply to basically people going outside of india so retail outlets making tax free supply to outgoing international tourist hence they will be eligible for refund of input because they are not charging any gst to the person who is going outside india because this is an export so no gst will be charged however on their inputs they will be paying gst so therefore this input they will be given a refund and with this we are done with this chapter and i'll see you in the next chapter that is your job work